Conference ACC softball from Clemson, South Carolina. We've got a couple games coming your way. We've got a doubleheader. It's the Boston College Eagles taking on the surging Clemson Tigers. And folks, have you heard something building here in Clemson? Just two years into this program, and look what they've done. A winning percentage of 879, the seventh best winning percentage in the country. Oh, boy. So glad you could join us with my partner, Barbara Jordan. I am Aaron Collins. Uh, it's amazing. My first time in this building. It's amazing, Barb, what Clemson has done with the softball program in two years. Yeah, you got to give a lot of credit to head coach John Rittman. He is no stranger to what it takes to win. During his career, he has appeared with three different college teams in the Women's College World Series. He has a young team built in the circle and offensively looking to do it again. All right, Clemson, they won the first game of this series last night. They pitched a shutout. Uh, Boston College is going to need a great pitching performance from Susanna Anderson today. Well, Anderson, she keeps Boston College in the game. How does she do that? She does it by attacking corners, specifically the inside part of the plate. What she needs is some offensive production from her teammates. All right, let's uh, take a look at what Clemson is thinking about. Their offense is fantastic. Uh, they average 308 as a team with 42 homers. And probably the, the biggest cog in the engine, Mackenzie Clark getting them going. Well, if you like enthusiasm, if you like somebody with confidence, keep your eyes on Clark. She is one of six players in the NCAA who has three triples this season. We're going to find her in the leadoff spot. She sets the tone for this offense. All right, take a look at the lineup card of Amy Cavillhog. Uh, now in her second year with Boston College. She'll lead things off with Ellie Mattia. Uh, Mattia, probably their best option to get them going. She hits 376. Uh, the rest of the lineup struggles at times on the year. It's a lineup that doesn't have a lot of power. Barb, they have just 10 home runs as a team so far through the first 30 games of the season. All right, let's do it. Game two of this four-game series, first of a doubleheader on a Saturday afternoon, and the game's first pitch is a little bit high. Thrown by Millie Thompson. Well, Thompson, this is her 10th start of the season. She's actually a drop ball pitcher, can throw at a few different speeds. She's got some very good movement. And right off the shoot tops, nice play by Kemi Pereira. And that's our game's first out. Nice play by Pereira. So two pitches into the game, we've got our first out. Next in line for Boston College, Elizabeth Laviolette. And she is hit with a pitch. So a mistake by Millie Thompson puts Laviolette aboard. One up base runner for the Eagles. I think coming to the field today, we possibly thought we were going to see Cagle in the circle today. But what we've seen with Rittman is giving a few different people an opportunity to get some reps. Yeah, if you're, you're new to this Clemson program, folks, Valerie Cagle is dynamic. Everything that she does. Bunt laid down and it spins foul off the bat of Emmy Martinez. Valerie Cagle, just a freshman, but she does everything. She pitched a complete game shutout. In yesterday's win for Clemson, she's going to play in left field today. She's their number three hitter. She's got a ton of pop. We'll be talking about her all afternoon long. There she is, number 72. John Rittman's been around a bunch of elite softball players, and he mentions her name in that same mix. Nice pitch by Millie Thompson, and it's now 0-2 on Martinez. Martina is probably the best defender for Boston College. She plays third base. Stays alive. I'll tell you, Millie Thompson, only her 10th start this season, but I like the way she has come out and has attacked these Boston College hitters early in the game. 5-7, left-hander from Bedford, Virginia. There goes the runner down a second. The throw is in time. Oh, nice throw. JoJo Hyatt throws out LaViolette. Out number two on the base pass. A lot of credit by Hyatt. That is the changeup on that pitch, and she's still got the juice in that arm to throw out the runner. JoJo Hyatt accounts for the second out of the ball game. 
One two pitch. Another changeup, and this one called strike three. Nice first inning for Billy Thompson. Boston College scoreless. Thompson heading to the bat rack. So good for the homestanding Clemson Tigers. A 1-2-3 first inning for the Boston College Eagles. And now John Rittman, his line of cart featuring Mackenzie Clark right out of the chute. Ansley Gilstrap, Valerie Cagle, Marissa Gambarda had a home run yesterday. That is a powerful bunch for Clemson. Take a look at those batting averages and the high numbers for this young team. They are a well-coached group. And they will take their swings against Susanna Anderson. Probably the best that BC has to offer. Junior right-hander from Alexandria, Virginia. Power pitcher, and I'm telling you, she is going to come right inside, specifically to the right-handed batters. Not afraid to challenge anybody. An Achilles heel for her, though. Sometimes she comes too far inside. She's got 25 hit by pitches. <laughs> hit batters this year. That's remarkable. Yeah, she's hit 25 batters in 115 and two-thirds innings. We shall see. Yeah, don't be fooled by Anderson's 12 losses. That ERA is what you need to look at. 2.24 is very impressive. Anderson's first pitch. Good steamer. Clark couldn't pull the trigger. 0-1. Freshman Mackenzie Clark. Real good start to her season. Five homers, 18 runs batted in. Went one for three last night. Last night's game one. Clemson won it six to nothing. BC was limited to just three singles. Clemson pounded up those six runs on ten hits. Two of them homers. Hard. Second baseman. Amdahl. Backhand's not in time. Clark got down the line quickly and no chance to get her. Infield single. We see the athleticism of Clark. Gets a good piece of the bat on the ball and then just natural speed. No chance to make that play. That's how you can hit 368. Hit a two hopper to the second baseman, you beat it out. Here's Ansley Gilstrap. Rad student from Blythewood, South Carolina. Wonderful defender at shortstop. Called strike one. Whenever you see anyone like Gilstrap, who is more than just a freshman for Clemson, you know that they transferred in from somewhere. This is a, a second-year program for Clemson. They just got started from the studs up two years ago. Gilstrap to short. And trying to get the short out of second. No out is recorded. The throw is airmailed into right field. That'll be an error. Everybody's safe. Still nobody out. Valido tried to get the lead runner at second. And I'll tell you, Valido charging that ball. Looks like she could, if it's a good throw, she can get the out. But really, with her momentum coming forward, the play right there defensively is to get the out at first. So a couple of two hoppers to infielders, one to second, one to short. And BC does not have an out yet. And Clemson has runners on at the corners. It's a dangerous game if you're BC trying to keep down this powerful Clemson team and you're not getting the sure outs. Absolutely, and for Anderson right now, she's just produced two ground balls, one being a base hit, another one being an error, but she's gonna need her defense to make the routines behind her for this team from Boston College to have some success. All right, well, here comes the thunder. Valerie Cagle. 384 batter with eight homers, 27 runs batted in. And her head coach, John Rittman, says one of the most beautiful swings he's ever seen. Off the pitcher's glove. That'll score a run. Still nobody out for Clemson. A 1-0 lead for the Tigers. I like the aggressive swings early in the count here for Clemson. 
Cagle going after the first pitch. Another ground ball. This ball has yet to leave the infield. And the only time it left the infield is when the shortstop, uh, Valido, overthrew the second baseman and threw it in the right. Here's the cleanup hitter, Marissa Gambarda. Gambarda hit a deep homer yesterday. She's got a team high nine bombs. Swatted into the gap, left center field, making the move over and making the play is LaViolette. Finally, an out recorded. Both base runners have to remain on their bases. And that's a nice job by Anderson, knowing that she had to keep the pitch in tight on Gumbarda right there. If she misses it all over the plate, that ball's out of the park. So here's Abby Stewart, freshman DP. Ball one. Stewart from Snow Camp, North Carolina. About equidistant between Greensboro and Chapel Hill, in case you're wondering. It's a whole new, snapped out a second, nothing doing. Barb, this is a whole new game now in the ACC with Clemson not only having a program, but being a viable, uh, well-thought-of program. A lot of these players growing up in this area, you think you're going to North Carolina, NC State, maybe Virginia Tech. Who knows? Maybe you escape to SEC country. All of a sudden, Clemson is going to get their fair share of big-time recruits. I agree with you 100%. I even think Florida State had their fair share of pickings from up here in this part of the United States. And now... You look at Duke and you look at Clemson and all of a sudden these are up and coming teams. A lot of these athletes here, their eyes are going not just to the, the schools that they always used to go to. One, two pitch. Little bit inside. Anderson really wanted it. Two balls and two strikes. Already one run across for Clemson. the end of the bat in the center field. Here comes Gilstrap around third. The throw and out in time. Another run scores for Clemson. RBI single Abby Stewart. I'll tell you, this is an exciting bunch. Look at what they're doing here early in the ball game. Anderson is keeping the ball down, but they are getting good pieces of the bat on the ball and just driving it. Every single one of these balls, even though there's been a lot of ground balls, they're being hit sharp. Here's another freshman, first baseman, Kaya Keller. Aggressive swing, and she chops it foul. Keller from down Alabama way. She's from Hollywood, Alabama. 286 batter. She's got two Clemson base runners in front of her. Cagle on it second. Stewart follows her on it first. Interesting to see Keller choking up on the bat a bit. This day and age, big powerful right-handed swingers, <laughs> they don't generally choke up, Barbara Jordan. Well, right now, Anderson, because she's a power pitcher, she's providing the power. Keller just wants to get a good piece of that barrel on the ball. Anderson's 1-1. One, one. Well, now she'll have to battle down in the count of ball and two strikes. Here you see Anderson just going to that down inside part of the plate. And I'd live there all day if I was Anderson, the way that Clemson has come out with their aggressiveness. Already three base hits for Clemson, all singles. Yeah. 
Good stop by the catcher. Ocaño kept that in front of her. And so BC lives to fight another day with runners on at first and second for Clemson. Softly to third, Martinez play right in front of her across the diamond. And that is now two outs in the inning. Another good pitch to the inside part of the plate by Anderson. And then Martinez again, we talked about how when the defender's momentum's coming forward, get the out over at first. Don't try to do anything too special on the defensive side of the field. Now Anderson will face her seventh batter of the inning. She's already thrown 18 pitches. Next in line, Aaliyah Logaleo. Getting last minute instructions. Freshman from Nashville, Tennessee. Well placed in here, could score a pair. Already two in for Clemson. Down the right field line, it is foul. That would have definitely scored a pair and put Logaleo in scoring position herself. If I'm Bucano behind the plate or Anderson, you have to know that every single batter of this inning has swung at one of the first two pitches. You have to make that mental note. That's why mixing in the changeup is so important for Anderson to do that early in the game. Just Jerry Spark, you played and, and coached at a high level, of course, Division One for so many years at Cal State Northridge. Uh, when teams are super aggressive with the bat in their hands, is that just their DNA, their identity, or is that something that's coached? I think it's both. I think scouting is just, just at a higher level these days. Everybody watches everybody else's video from all the games that are on TV. So I think understanding what a pitcher throws and what you're looking for, there's no reason not to come out and be aggressive. And then for some hitters, they just have this innate aggressiveness to us. So put that on top of the scouting. Of course they're going to be aggressive. They're going to be dangerous as well. Two balls and a strike. Hammer down the left field line. One run in. They're going to send Stewart around and just score standing. A two-run single. Look at and it's a 4 nothing lead for Clemson. I'll tell you, Logaleo hit the liner down the right field line that went just foul. Now she shows she can hit down the left field line as well as she laces this ball to score two. So four runs on four hits, all of them singles for Clemson in the bottom of the first inning. Here's JoJo Hyatt. Barb, if we go back eight minutes ago, we were talking about the fact that there were a couple of balls that were relatively softly hit in the infield and outs were not recorded. That was really the genesis of what we're seeing right now. Yeah, Gill's trapped with that grounder to short. Valido choosing to go for two with an errant throw, and that really had this inning unravel. Logaleo is going to take an extra base. Clemson continues to be aggressive with two outs and already four runs in. I'll tell you, for having a young team, John Rittman has some power and he's got a lot of speed. He's got the foundation for a lot of success here. And when you're stealing off of Gianna Bacano, you've done something. She leads the ACC in runners caught stealing. So she's obviously quick with the transfer, and she's got a hose. Yeah, absolutely. She is fantastic. We've seen her try to pick some runners here early this inning, showing off her arm. But she's not intimidating Clemson, who has a stolen base here early today, too, last night. And I like that. I like that mentality. You see somebody who's got good numbers, but you challenge them anyways. Find out for yourself what they're made out of. All right, 24 pitches already thrown by Susanna Anderson. Four runs in, runner in scoring position. Better to get JoJo Hyatt. Two balls, no strikes. Oh. 
on the ground. Shit in the inning. Andal over to first side is retired. But major damage done for the locals. Clemson scores four times. Take a look at those ACC standings. Just the top seven. And you know Florida State's going to be there. Lonnie Alameda's bunch perennial powers at the ACC level. Uh, but Clemson, two years into this program, Barbara Jordan. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Got to go back into the history. Florida State, Lonnie Alameda, and John Rittman used to coach together at Stanford. Now here they are on the other side of the country leading the ACC. So respected, John Rittman. Not only... For the things he did at Stanford, uh, coaching the likes of uh, Lauren Lappin and Jessica Mendoza, among others, but also his time with Team USA. Ten years with the USA softball program, two Olympics, gold medal, silver medal. And I'll tell you, you know, you, you write all that stuff off, but you have to think about the elite athletes that he has been around throughout his career. And I know you're going to have fun with that stat. I know these <laughs> names are just rushing through your brain right now. Kristen Guyrie is the batter. She is the older of the two Guyries in the lineup today for Boston College. Younger sister Nicole will bat third in this inning. And did she go too far? Yes, she did. Ball and two strikes. Kyrie sisters from Vienna, Virginia. <laughs> Millie Thompson, second inning of work. Off speed popped up. Folder. Logaleo makes the one handed grab, one down. Thompson wanted it. She wanted to do it all. I like how she backed off, letting Logaleo come in, and make the play. Everybody back. Everybody back. <laughs> Gianna Rondaza, right fielder. Senior from New Jersey takes off speed for a called strike. Now, it looks like Thompson's feeling it right now. Mm. Good change of speed right there. Hard and through. That's the first base hit allowed by Thompson. And Daza is aboard with a one-out single. And a baby! Good aggressive hitting that pitch, missing right over the middle of the plate as she lines it through. Nicole Guyre grabs a bat. Swings to the first pitch and loops it in the right field. Back-to-back -back singles on consecutive pitches for BC. All right, there's some life in those bats. I like the response right here from Boston College. After giving up four runs in the first inning, they are trying to make something happen here in the top of the second. I always think that shows a lot of character, how you respond after something unravels. Well, this is an important bat early in the game. Gianna Bacano, uh, one of the few players on BC's roster that's got power. She's got three of the ten home runs that they've hit as a team. If she can run into one right here, then all of a sudden Amy Cavillhog's punch can dream again. Thompson's 0-1. This grazed foul at the plate. And now Bacanio will have to work. Two runners on for BC. Back-to-back -back singles. Randaza and Guy Reed. Softly hit. Logaleo bobbled it. Still had enough time to make the play at first. Two down. A de facto bunt. There are now runners at second and third with one out remaining to work with for BC. 
Logo Lo- Logaleo showing her versatility. Was actually in left field last night. Making a nice catch to end the game. Getting the reps in the infield today. As I mentioned, Rittman moving his players around, giving them some good experience. DeJane Valido is the batter. Shortstop made an error in the bottom of the first inning. She would love to atone. Got a chance right here. All it takes is a bloop somewhere. Get it on the green. Man, I've been impressed with that off-speed pitch. Yeah, I love a pitcher that will throw back-to-back change-ups on a hitter. He's got good command of it. Molino has to work. Down in the count of two. Good job to protect. Stays alive. I'll tell you, we've talked about Boston College. One through nine, they don't have high batting averages. But the best their batting averages are are actually when they have runners on base. Ah. Everybody jumps up about 50 points. Yeah, Amy Cavillhawk says her strategy as a team, she believes shorten your swing, put the ball in play, give yourself a chance, which is radically different from what we saw last week when we were in Raleigh watching NC State, who flat out make no bones about the fact that they're going for the downs each and every time they step to the plate. Yeah, Coach Jennifer Patrick Swift at NC State, her philosophy, you get three strikes, try to hit a home run on every strike that you get. It actually worked for them last night as they hit a game-winning home run against LSU. Nice win. Not only a nice win for NC State, a nice win for the ACC. Absolutely. All right, 0 2 to Valido. Got her to chase. Good work by Millie Thompson. Thompson got in trouble and then got herself out of trouble after an inning and a half. 4 0 Clemson. Really good start for the Clemson Tigers. Bottom of the first inning, Barb, they get four runs. Well, I like it. Just started off. Clark putting the ball in play using her speed. A little miscue on the defensive side of the field. And that really let the inning unravel. A lot of ground balls. Only one fly ball and one line drive. But Clemson putting the ball in hard, in play hard, and making things happen. That's case in point why so many people love this game. There's so many opportunities to make plays. You make plays, you can win. But small mistakes, even if it's in the first inning, the third, whatever, they cost you. John Ripman knows that. He's been around this game for a long time. When the plays are presented, you got to make them. And he said on for his team, the, def- the defense this year has been one of the biggest changes because last year coming out their very first year, they had more defensive miscues. That's something that his team has cleaned up. Bottom of the second inning, number nine hitter, Cami Pereira. Senior second baseman, Pereira from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Pereira will be followed by the top of the order, Mackenzie Clark and Ansley Gilstrap. Susanna Anderson had to work back in her first inning. Now down in the count, 2-0. and 2-1. Oh. Oh. Well, Eric, you mentioned how, how does this young team have so much confidence? And part of that is, is Kyle Jamison over at first base. He was the former head coach at Furman. He's the associate head coach here. Some of his former players have come with him, Pereira being one of those players. And just having that confidence, the younger players understand what it takes to compete at a high level. Yeah, there's three members of this year's Clemson team that played at Furman. It's also a transfer from USC Upstate, also, of course, here in South Carolina. Yeah, and they didn't necessarily play for him, but he recruited them at one point. Able to check her swing. They appealed, no swing, so it's a walk. Lead-off base runner for Clemson here in the second inning. It's the first walk allowed by Anderson. All right, back to the top of the order, and Mackenzie Clark singled and scored. Mm. Got to ask for help on that puppy. 
Here's Clark. Let's see if the Tigers want to play small ball. Already up 4 nothing. Nope, looks like Clark's going to swing away. He's got thump. Five homers on the year. Hitting a hard 374. Barbara, I hate to always go in the Wayback Machine, but we've seen a changing of the thought process in the world of softball. Last week, we're at NC State. Angie Rizzi did phenomenal work hitting leadoff for NC State. Right-handed batter who swings from the heels. You know, it used to be you follow high-level high fast pitch. Your leadoff batter almost exclusively was a small left-handed slap hitter. Martinez. Good play by Martinez. That's the first out. I think it takes a special right-handed batter to be the leadoff because there's a lot of truth to so much success having that special left-handed slapper, somebody that can hit away from the left side of the box. But when you have somebody who has talent, who has power, who's got speed as a right-handed batter, it's just as exciting to have them in the leadoff spot. Yeah, he's a right-handed hitting leadoff hitter is about as rare as a left-handed catching catcher. You know, a left-handed throwing catcher. It's one of those things that just doesn't happen at this level. But it's been a change in recent years, and I like it. Here's Killstrap, runner on at second and one out. And a snap throw, not a second. Wow, we've really seen Bacano aggressive with that arm. She'll throw it all the way around the diamond. Is that a play? Yeah, that's just how good her arm is right there. That's just her just acting like she's throwing it back to the pitcher. She's not jumping up and creating the aha moment. Good strike, one and one. Clemson scored four times in their half of the first inning. Good block by Bacano. Two and one. Way out in front. Count evens at two. Anderson's got good velocity. Don't have an official reading on her, but it seems to be mid to high 60s. Yeah, definitely the high 60s. And again, I love the way she paints the inside corner, specifically to the right-handed hitters. Got it a chase. Good work by Anderson. That is her first strikeout, and it comes at an opportune time. Two outs. There we see her here going down and away. It's a big strikeout. Now, how aggressive will she be with Valerie Cagle? Cagle drove in her under the single an inning ago. There is a right-handed batter next in the on-deck circle. Cagle swings at the first pitch. A little innocuous bouncer down the first baseline, and the side is retired. Good job by Anderson. 4 0 clubs in third innings next. There's your score. Clemson leading BC 4 0 as we play the top of the third inning. Clemson scored their four runs in the first inning. An error and four singles. Millie Thompson has done her job to keep that score where it is. Two shutout innings for her. Gave up back-to-back -back singles in the second, but then retired Bacano and Valido to end the frame. So far, Thompson has thrown a grand total of 23 pitches. Eight in the first, 15 in the second. Number nine hitter, Erica Andel. And that is trouble. Wow, doing the splits on the first baseline. Kaya Keller falls to the ground and everyone's safe. 
this is picture perfect for Andel. Coming here with a drag bunt, taking it right up the first baseline. Catches it right off the edge of the bat. Did you see Keller do the splits? Oh my goodness. That's incredible. That was the highlight of the play to me. So three singles now. First time through the order for Boston College. And another bunt, small ball. This will be a sacrifice as Mattia is out number one, but moving into scoring position goes Andal. So two balls that went probably a combined 40 feet. And BC has a runner in scoring position with one out. I'll tell you, Mattia, who's their number one hitter, she has her laying down a sacrifice bunt there just to get a runner in scoring position. And yeah, well, dating back to yesterday, a shutout. So Boston College has gone eight, make that nine innings here in this series without a run. You just need to break the seal at some point. Amy Cavillhog, longtime head coach at St. John's. She's always been up in the Northeast. Uh, she was an elite player as a pitcher at Providence College back in the 90s. Yeah, she was actually inducted into the Providence Athletics Hall of Fame. And believe it or not, that era of Providence Friars softball uh, was fertile ground for future Division I head coaches. Uh, the Drohans, who have done just phenomenal work at Northwestern in the Big Ten, were her teammates at Providence. Kate and Carol. Kate actually did the induction speech for Coach Cavillhog when she was inducted. You gotta love it. <laughs> but you know softball, everything is intertwined. Uh, Somewhere along the way, the years, we're all yep. connected. Elizabeth LaViolette swipes at it and fouls it back to the screen. Thompson hit LaViolette her first time up. LaViolette was eventually cut down trying to steal second base. Hard on the ground, that'll make it through. Let's see if they'll send the runner. Nope, she will stop at third, and he'll give it a stop sign. Runners on at the corners. So here come your BC Eagles. Good job by LaViolette. Yeah, LaViolette gets the ball down and in and drives it through the three, four hole. Good piece of hitting. It's a good pitch. Okay, here comes Emmy Martinez. Struck out looking her first time up. Runners on at the corners for BC. A little bit high, ball one. Martinez hitting in that three hole, doesn't have a homer on the year. Has driven an eight. Off the end of the bat, runner does not come down from third. Oh, a missed opportunity for BC as Martinez looks across the diamond and says, how come you didn't come in? <laughs> well, we saw Andal speed when she laid down the bunt, and I think she knows it. She made a base running miscue right there with that slow roller to second base. She had every opportunity in the world to score, especially with Pereira playing back. This ball is dribbled foul. Mm, that could haunt BC. Clemson was conceding the run. They were not going to come home with that throw. Guy Ree hits it softly, a lot of spin, stabbed at by Thompson, and she throws it to first to retire the side. Again, a lot of action for BC, but still no score for them. We played two and a half, bottom of the third inning. Clemson on top of Boston College, four to nothing. Interesting to note, looking at that line score, both BC and Clemson with four hits, yet Clemson has scored four times, and BC with nothing. 
can't make those type of mistakes if you're BC. You get runners on, you got to figure out by hook or crook how to get them across. Yeah, you got to stay aggressive on the bases. And the difference right now is that Clemson is swinging the bat, putting the ball in play sharply when they have opportunities to score. All right, it'll be four, five, and six for the Clemson Tigers, batting here in the third inning. Marissa Gambarda leads things off, followed by Abby Stewart and Kaya Keller. A junior followed by a couple of freshmen against Susanna Anderson. Anderson's done a good job. Don't let those four runs crossing fool you. An error in that first inning was costly. Gambarda hits it hard, but foul. We have a change defensively to tell you about. And it's an important one. Uh, the best defender for Boston College, we were told, the third baseman, Emmy Martinez. Uh, she is no longer at third. It's A.J. Alator. Hmm. Remember, there is re-entry at this level of softball, so we may see Martinez come back in. Heck of a play! Ellie Mataya got a great jump and makes that catch in center field. This is the type of plays that center fielders dream of. Something my way, and I am not going to let it touch the ground. As Matea, you hit it right on the head, Eric. She gets a fantastic jump as she secures this ball in. Good job by Matea. One down here in the third. Abby Stewart, RBI single her first time up. All of a sudden, Anderson feeling it. Pours over strike one. Not quite the weather we all anticipated uh, when we got here to Clemson, South Carolina. I was thinking at least mid-70s and steamy. Uh, we're talking low 60s with wind. You got a jacket on, Barbara Jordan. <laughs> Some of us looked at the weather prior to coming. I looked at the, the map is what I looked at. You don't need to look at the weather when you go to Clemson, South Carolina in April. Shouldn't be mid-70s. Ball and two strikes. Mm, quality pitch just misses inside. Stewart with that single her first time up is now three for four in this weekend series against BC. Just a freshman. Oh, she got her. We knew that was Susanna Anderson's reputation. That is now the 26th batter that she has hit. And of course, when you got someone set up with two strikes, the last thing you want to do is hit them. Yeah, but we know she likes to work that inside part of the plate. And that ball clearly in the batter's box. So Stewart gets a bruise and should be lifted. Uh, Carly Shannon, a freshman, will come in to run. It's just amazing. Of the non-starters for Clemson in today's game, uh, there is one senior, Casey Bigham. Uh, there is one junior, Bailey Taylor. Uh, and everyone else is a freshman. Yeah, there's a, a lot of potential for this Clemson team. And there's a lot of excitement in the community, and they've supported them since going back to 2020, where they averaged over 1,500 people. Keller, routine to left, catch made by LaViolette. They averaged over 1,544 people per home game last year, which was first in the ACC in their very first season. That's, that's impressive. Yeah, and then you look at the people here today, and I think they've limited it to like 350 people can enter the ballpark, but they're still out there on the other side of the fence just really embracing this young team. Logaleo, the batter, singled in a pair her first time up. Dark down to second, but it one-hops the shortstop covering. 
Valido can't pick it up, and that allows the pinch runner to get a stolen base. So Shannon is in scoring position. Great jump by Shannon. Quick feet and a nice dive as she gets her hand in there. That's making use of your roster. Head coach John Rittman lifting Stewart for the faster runner, Shannon, then using that speed to get her in scoring position. You see that down and in pitch. It's a good pitch by Anderson after Logo Leo drilled it down the left field line, her last at bat. Mm. Well, I will say this. Uh, these wonderful facilities, uh, obviously a wonderful university, Clemson. This has got to be the easiest recruiting uh, of anyone in the ACC. We have a program that is so new. Two years ago, you're recruiting kids. You can guarantee them they're going to get playing time because there's no such thing as an upperclassman when you just start your program. Yeah, but what I like that Coach Ritman has done is he didn't just say, hey, come here and play. You know, it's like more like come here and win. Come here and let's go after the ACC as we see them sitting in second place in the standings right now. Yeah, remarkable what they have done in the season and a half of, of softball. Yeah, and what mindset is, you know, what, what is your vision? And then you instill that on a young group, a young talented group. Good pitch by Anderson. I'll tell you what, she has been impressive since that first inning. To the fourth we go, four nothing Clemson. Ranked team in the country, the Clemson Tigers leading BC four to nothing. Top of the fourth inning. Barbara Jordan, let's go through the timeline for this Clemson softball program. There was a lot of buzz in the air when Clemson announced that they were going to have a softball program back in the spring of 2017. More excitement when they named John Rittman as the head coach, and then the recruiting began. And then fast forward to 2021 in their second season, their first top 25 ranking. Came fast. Came fast. That softball's so hot right now, and this part of the world plays elite softball at the high school level. So you have a chance to get fantastic players, and if you've got the facilities and you've got the proper coaching staff and you're pointing in the right direction, you can get good in a hurry. Absolutely, and right now they don't have even a crew of players from the West Coast once they start pulling from that hotbed as well. This program is just going to continue to elevate. Gianna Rondaza is the batter. Rondaza, the senior right fielder, singled her first time up. Austin College actually done a good job of getting base runners over the last couple innings. Just hadn't cashed anything in. Off-speed pitch of beauty. 0-2. Oh yeah, I think that changeup for Thompson is going to be her signature pitch. Casey Bigham's come in. She's now playing at third. It's not unusual. Bigham is a phenomenal player in her own right. Didn't get the start today, but she's at third right now, replacing Logaleo. Logaleo remains in the game. She's out in left field. Backhand is stop. Kill strap long throw. Got her there. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. High level defense. Ansley kill strap. What a cannon from that hole. This is a big time play by Gilstrap at the shortstop position. Not only does it show her range, how about her upper body strength? How about her arm as she makes this play and just fires it across the field? Mm. You could hang a month's worth of laundry on that uh, <laughs> on that frozen rope she threw across the diamond. That was impressive. I love it. One down here in the fourth inning. Guy Ree bounces it foul. This is Nicole Guy Ree. Uh, for those with a discerning eye, you may notice that Nicole Guy Ree wears number 55. Uh, before, in the order with the first baseman, her older sister, Kristen Guy Ree, wears number five. 
So the number's 5 and 55 representing the family. There's a reason for that. Down the right field line and foul out of play. Uh, we were inquiring, and that five is a significant number to the family. Both of the parents for Nicole and Kristen wore number five during their playing days. And they all wanted to wear number five and continue to represent the family. And obviously only one person can wear five, so one wears five, the other one wears 55. That's out number two. Let's go back and look at that play by Gilstrap to make the first out of the inning. Deep in the 5-6 hole, she just unloads everything in her body to make that throw. Oh, that helps. When you're a pitcher like Millie Thompson, who's got it going, you got a shutout. And you get defense like that behind you, confidence just surges. Yeah, and I like Keller's reaction over at first base. Bacano hits it well. Gap left center field. It's gone! First run of the game for Boston College. Gianna Bacano, fourth homer of the year. We told you she could run into one. That breaks the seal. It's the first run of the series for BC. Bucanio coming up with the pitch right over the outside part of the plate. It's a nice piece of hitting. Putting Boston College on the board. So BC, let's see if this helps them moving forward. A little bit of momentum. Called strike one to Valido. Valido struck out to end the second inning with runners on at second and third. One and one. On the ground is short, routine, Gilstrap. She was the defensive star here in this half inning. But BC finally gets a run across. A homer by Gianna Bacano. It's 4-1. Welcome back, everyone. Tip of the cap to the catcher for Boston College, Gianna Bacano. A deep home run over the center field fence here in the top of this fourth inning to give Boston College their first run. BC trails Clemson 4-1 to one as we play the bottom of the fourth inning. This is a relatively common four-game weekend series here in the ACC this year. Barb, your thoughts on these four gamers? Well, I think for a long time the coaches fought to have, you know, that three-game series, a single game each day. And it's hard. I think it's harder on the pitchers to play an opponent in a four-game series because those hitters are going to make adjustments the longer they, they see the same pitching. And that's why it's so important now, even even more so in today's world, to, to have a staff. You know, the days of just having that one ace, are those are long gone. JoJo Hyatt leads things off for Clemson here in the fourth inning. Called strike one. Hyatt bounced out to the second baseman her first time up. That was in the first inning. Anderson gave up four hits in the first inning to Clemson and eventually led to four runs. She has not given up a hit since. And three of those four were, were ground ball, ground ball hits, one being an infield single to start the game. Two balls and a strike. Yeah, if you're Anderson and you're going to face a team like Clemson, you're going to have to keep it basically in the infield. And you're going to have to make sure that Clemson earns it. You don't want to give out anything free. And for the most part, Anderson has done that. She's walked one. She hit a batter. But that's been offset by a couple of strikeouts. And her defense has been a whole heck of a lot better since that first inning. But now she's in trouble. 
It's three balls and a strike to the leadoff hitter, Hyatt. DC just finally got something going with that solo homer by Bacano. They'd love to get a quick one, two, three inning and get back into that dugout again. No, not meant to be. A five pitch walk, and Hyatt is aboard. A lot of people don't understand the importance of when you have like a number eight hitter or seven hitter leading off an inning and when they get on because you never want to get back to the top of the order because once you get back to the top of the order that person is so good at getting on base then you always think about the big hitters coming up and of course with runners being on base if the inning gets going Clemson has that power in their two three four spots all right, uh, John Rittman has made a change with the catcher, JoJo Hyatt, drawing the leadoff walk. He's going to lift her and replace her with Jaden Cheek. So Cheek is aboard at first with nobody out. Here's Cami Pereira, senior second baseman. Bunt could be in play here. Next handful of hitters for Clemson. A ton of pop. Clark, Gilstrap, Kegel, Gambarda. Swinging away. Lifted deep to left field. LaViolette goes back off the wall. Extra bases possibly. No. Oh, the longest single imaginable. It's a single off the wall in left center field. You can't hit it any harder or farther and keep it in the yard. Opposite field power here for Pereira, who hits it off the wall. And then the pinch runner cheek was actually hanging out at first, thinking possibly she's going to tag, not getting off the bag. That's why we got a long, long single here this inning. She'd like to make that up. <laughs> All right, so runners at first and at second, still nobody out. Here's Mackenzie Clark's third look at Anderson. Clark one for two. In the weekend series, she's now two for five. Freshman from Florida, Central Florida, not too far away from Sarasota. going to be playable one down AJ Alator still the third baseman she came on defensively for Emmy Martinez an inning ago there's a big pitch right here going up against Clark who is the most consistent hitter for Clemson just keeping it in on her hands in a big situation all right next in line for Clemson Ansley Gilstrap And again, that uh, fake throw back to the circle and trying to pick <laughs> off the runner at second. I'll tell you, she has got a shotgun for an arm. It's effortless. Gilstrap, four homers on the year. Looks at a steamer, 0-2. For whatever reason it is, rare to see a player wearing glasses. Obviously, no worse for the wear. Works for her. It's 352. We saw what she did defensively. <laughs> <laughs> Not those type of glasses. <laughs> the rally goggles. Hard through to left field. That'll be a base hit. Everyone will pick up an extra 60 feet. 
Nice ball game for Gilstrap. And Clemson's in business. I think Gilstrap is looking for that inside pitch. That's what Anderson has stymied the Clemson hitters on these last couple innings, but she gets a good piece of the bat on the ball. And dangerous situation for BC. I thought they were clawing back into this one with a run in the top of this inning. But now, with just one out, the bases are full for Clemson and their best hitter coming to the plate. Valerie Cagle, who in her past has good history with the Grand Slam. Gilstrap last year was part of a multi-home run Grand Slam inning for Clemson. Cagle was phenomenal as a freshman, still a freshman classification because of everything that's happened in the world. But yeah, hitting with the bases loaded, Barb, doesn't seem to phase her. No, no, and she leads this team in RBI. She is exactly who Coach Rittman wants up to bat right now. Infield's in. Ooh, dangerous proposition. On the ground, backhanded beautifully by the first baseman, Guy Ree. Gets the out in front of her at home, and the score remains 4-1. Anderson, another big pitch to another big hitter. Look how tight she keeps that pitch. And that's just enough to prevent Cagle from really getting extended and getting all of that ball. All right, so now two outs, but still a dangerous proposition. Clemson has Gabarda at the plate. Called strike one. Gambarda angry. She was robbed her last time up. Hit a sinking line drive to center that Ellie Mataya made a great catch on. Gambarda, she gets extended on this. That is a big girl swing right there as she crushes it just all off the glove of La Violette in left field. And I'll tell you, for Boston College defensively, how many balls have we seen just mm, tip off yep. their gloves today? Softball is a game of inches, and when Boston College learns to make some of these plays that they're so close to making defensively, they can stop the bleeding. That would have been a highlight level catch if LaViolette would have made that play. That was degree of difficulty 9 points. Oh yeah, it would, it would have been a 9, it would have been a 10, absolutely. But it would have saved three runs. That's the difference between glory and uh, despair. And now we're going to have a pitching change. So Anderson is out at least temporarily and CC Cook will come in. Saw Cook pitch last night. Actually gave up two home runs in the game. Does not throw as hard as Anderson. She's all about movement. Going to move the ball in and out of the zone. A big key for Cook is to limit the back-to-back -back hits or the back-to-back -back batters reaching base. So we're going to have changes all the way around. It's not only a new pitcher, but it's also going to be a new hitter for Clemson. CC Cook will not face Abby Stewart, who was scheduled to bat, but instead it's going to be Bigham batting. Casey Bigham batting for the first time. She came on defensively uh, an inning ago, and now she'll remain in the game to bat. Bigham on the year, a 220 batter. And she'll hit in a low pressure situation as already. Three runs have scored for Clemson here in this fourth inning. They lead 7-1. to one. Clemson's gone to their bench again and brought in a pinch runner. Ariel Oda is the batter. All right. 
right, so it's Cook pitching to Bigham. Clemson scored four times in the first inning. They scored three times here in this fourth. Cook's first pitch a little bit low. Bigham is a graduate student. She is from the Charlotte area. She's from Waxhaw, North Carolina. Marvin Rich High School. Previous college experience was at Furman. Furman. Mentioned there's three Furman transfers on this year's Clemson team. Stop. And Oda picks up an extra base. And it's just a wild pitch. Ball completely out of the zone. Nothing Bucanio can do behind the plate. Two balls and a strike. Three and one. Kind of a cool opportunity for Casey Bigham. Grew up a Clemson fan, of course couldn't play. Clemson softball didn't exist when she graduated from high school. Both of her parents went to Clemson. Her dad, Brian, actually was the equipment manager for the football team under Danny Ford back in the day, back in the 80s. That's a pretty close connection to Clemson athletically. Her mom, Donna, also a Clemson grad. And look at that. BC wasn't paying attention, so Bigham took an extra base. I'll tell you, Bigham just challenged Bucanio every step of the way. Got to first, kept walking, kept walking. Bucanio, what, what she wants to do right there is get the ball in the circle and force Bigham to choose a direction. Right, for those of you at home wondering, yes, that is indeed a stolen base. And all of a sudden... I don't know if I'll go there, but folks, just uh, for truth and advertising, BC's in trouble. Clemson's already up by six. If you get up by eight, once five innings are complete, uh, the game can be called. So a well-placed base hit here, two-run score, that means BC will only have three more outs to keep the game alive. If they don't score a run next inning, if Clemson scores two here, uh, this game will come to a close real quick. First baseman Keller, 0 for 2. And another pitch sails all the way to the net. Yeah, wild pitch right here. Ball just sails up and over Bucanio. I think right now she's just trying to overthrow just a little bit. All right, it's go time for Keller. Hitters count. Took a huge cut. Foul tips it into the catcher's glove. Three and one. Three hits in the inning already for Clemson. Couple of singles and a double. Right down the heart of the plate. Inning began with that leadoff walk to JoJo Hyatt. Always a dangerous proposition. Three and two. Third walk allowed by BC pitching here in this fourth inning. All right, 
Clemson's batted around. The ninth batter of the inning, Aaliyah Logaleo, steps to the plate. Logaleo already has one grand slam on this season. Nice strike. Speed pitch, one and one. That's a good mix by Cook right there. I'll tell you, sometimes it's hard as a hitter when the pitcher's not around the zone when they're missing. We've seen Cook throw some really wild pitches. Sometimes as a hitter, it makes it harder to hit. Two and one. Remember the days of Michelle Granger. Sometimes she just wing it to the back. Stop. You know, she already threw 70. Hitters were like, what's happening? Two and one. Uh-oh. Three and one. Cook has come out of the pen and walked Bingham, walked Keller, and now is one pitch away from walking Logaleo. Count goes full three and two. All right, this will be fun. Carousel will be in motion. Three balls, two strikes, two outs, bases loaded. Already three runs have scored for Clemson. If Logaleo can find a gap here, that could score three. Most important pitch of the ball game for CeCe Cook. High pop-up. This is going to get her out of the inning. Mataya. Makes the play, side is retired, but Clemson scores three more. They lead seven to one. Hey, we've made it through four innings here at McWhorter Stadium, Clemson, South Carolina. And so far, so good for the 17th ranked team in the country, the Clemson Tigers, who will work on a Saturday afternoon. A little bit of everything. You see the defense, the offense, good base running, and wonderful work so far in the circle by Millie Thompson. Yeah. Thompson, just a freshman, really only one blemish, and that was that solo home run given up an inning ago. What I like about Thompson, she's getting ahead of the hitters, but what I really think she's doing well is she's mixing that changeup, and she's not afraid to throw it back to back. Thompson has given up five hits, four singles, and that solo home run. Nine, one, and two in the BC lineup, batting against Thompson. Erica Andel, freshman from Pembroke Pines, Florida. Saw Andel doing some small ball, getting herself on base her last time up, taking it up the first baseline. Two hopper, second baseman Pereira, one down. Now BC needs a little bit of runs for some wiggle room. The magic number is eight. That's the run ahead rule. One team is leading by eight runs or more. When you have five in the books, then the game automatically comes to an end. Right now, BC's down six. So next time up, if they're not careful, Clemson could end it quickly. If anyone can get Boston College going, it's Ellie Mattia. She leads this team in every offensive category except for home runs. Flipped foul and off the screen, 0-2. 
And we're talking to uh, Amy Cavillhug about her leadoff hitter, and she said Matai just keeps it simple. And, you know, sometimes that makes all the difference in the world. It used to be an expression, no brain, no headache, you know? <laughs> just keep it simple. See ball, hit ball. a nice presence in the box so just sometimes you look at a hitter just the way they take a pitch and how quiet their body is how quiet their hands are and that's what i see with mataya stayed back on an off-speed pitch lifts it to center field and clark makes the play two down let's go number 24 elizabeth marionette Quickly two down. Here's the freshman, LaViolette. LaViolette's had a perfect day so far with the bat in her hands. Was hit with a pitch her first time up. And then she's singled in that third inning. Mm. Fooled her. That's impressive. When you can go three times through the lineup and you're still fooling batters. <laughs> Yeah, but it's all about, you know, what you see in a batter when they step in the box, that aggressiveness. If you think they're going to swing early in the count, you can always surprise them with the changeup. Best changeup you ever saw? Mm. That's a good question. I got to say Lisa Fernandez had one of the best. I do have to say that. You know what? I'm of the generation where she was the first time I ever heard the expression go. Um, this was probably 20 years ago, and I heard it applied to Lisa Fernandez. Mm. Uh, is she still? I don't know. There's been a lot of great athletes that have come and gone, but I think she's always going to be in the conversation. Oh, man. Lisa Fernandez. You know. If, the, if there's the greatest of all time in terms of two-way player, in terms of competitive player, mm. uh, it's Lisa Fernandez hands down. Yeah, but now you got this young Valerie Cagle coming up, a two-way <laughs> player, going old school. Well, the other thing that Fernandez did, which will never be duplicated, is she was elite at 40 feet with the white ball, and she was elite at 43 feet with the yellow ball. She played old school softball and was phenomenal, and she played this new age softball and was phenomenal. I got to get up to Lisa Fernandez. Can you tell him a fan? <laughs> That's a foul ball. We'll do it again. Three balls and two strikes. Fans here thought that this should have been fair. See Keller coming in. Mm. Oh, I think they have uh, some reason to. Uh, it's where chant. it is when it crosses the bag. Now this one, almost the exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> the last one was in slow motion. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it will make my weekend if she can do it three straight times. How about that exact same chopper on the first baseline? Oh, yeah. Into the gap. Left center field. That'll get down. LaViolette can run. On her way to second, she'll make it standing. What a high quality at bat for the freshman LaViolette. She's still perfect on the afternoon. LaViolette gets the ball on the outside part of the plate and goes with it. I love the curve in this ball while it was in the air, just tailing away from Clark as it rolls to the wall. That's a good-looking hitter. Her dad is actually the head coach in the NHL for the Washington Capitals. Is that right? Yeah. Fantastic. First ball swinging. Alatore. And the side is retired. That will do it. Two on double on Laviolette does no damage. Seven to one. Clemson. Welcome back, everyone. Bottom of the fifth inning. Beautiful softball environment here in Clemson, South Carolina. And the home team leading BC seven to one with my partner, Barbara Jordan. I'm Eric Collins. Glad you're with us. This is uh, uh, the start of a full day of yellow ball action coming your way. We've got the second game of our doubleheader, which will be about a half hour after this one draws to a close. C.C. Cook remains in the game. She came on last inning in relief of Susanna Anderson. 
and struggled. She walked a pair before finally getting uh, the final out of the inning. And now she'll have to tiptoe again through this Clemson lineup uh, with danger on both sides. Clemson leads by six. We're at that point in the game where if Clemson scores two times, this game's going to be over. They lead by eight through five. The game is stopped because of the run-ahead rule. JoJo Hyatt called strike one. Hardy, good pitch by Cook. Maybe the best pitch she's thrown yeah, since she's nice been in the game. Yeah, nice job by Cook. And always a difference when a pitcher gets ahead. Always makes it so much easier to go after a corner. One and two. Cook is from Phoenix, Arizona. That makes her a bit of a rarity in this game here today. Uh, BC, obviously, they recruit nationally. BC, is that's just who they are. Uh, but Clemson, they do not. They don't need to right now. John Rittman, who's got connections all the way across the country, and particularly out in Pac-12 country, he has nothing but local kids on his roster. Clemson's team is made up of nothing of kids but North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, Georgia, Alabama. He believes in it as well. He said, you know, if you want to have a successful program, you're going to recruit in your own state. Now, he's got to recruit in California. His father-in-law actually is the head coach of a travel ball team. <laughs> <laughs> so there is a little uh, spring training going on somewhere on the West Coast. Long time head coach at Stanford. Two balls and two strikes to Hyatt. Change up a little bit high. Three and two. We'll do it again. It's a big batter to get for C.C. Cook. He's faced three batters and walked two of them. You don't want to walk the leadoff batter here. Hammered into the gap left center field. Making the run and catches LaViolette. Oh, nice play. That robbed Hyatt of possible extra bases. Nice running catch by LaViolette out there in left field. As we take a look at Lori Rittman, the wife of head coach John Rittman. Seen a lot of softball in their days. Mm. Lori actually was an All-American third baseman out of the University of Oklahoma. Is that right? Absolutely. Oh, they know their way around uh, softball in Oklahoma. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Now John was a baseball player, played Division I at New Mexico State. Athletic family. Here's Cami Pereira. Perfect day for her. She's been aboard twice. Two and one. With the success that Clemson has had, with the following that they already have, with the popularity of softball in this area and softball in general over the last couple of decades, it's you, you compliment them and congratulate them on everything they've done, but it also makes you wonder, what took so long? <laughs> I think with the growth of softball and 
just the popularity of it on TV. I think if I'm a university and I don't have a softball program, yes. I'm thinking, I want to be part of that. Let's get in. And Pereira is hit with that pitch. So she's been aboard three times today, uh, three different ways. A walk, a single, and now hit by pitch. So one on, one out, and here comes Mackenzie Clark, who has got enough power to end this game with one spring of the bat. Should Clemson score twice here in this half inning, the game's over. Remember, Cook gave up a couple of homers yesterday. One and oh. One of the multitude of freshmen in that everyday lineup for Clemson. This is the 17th ranked team in the country, and they started six freshmen out of the nine batters in today's game. Now, of course, you know, you have to deal with the fact that a lot of them are second-year players they played last year and still classified as freshmen uh, because everyone just got a bonus year last year. But still, considering the amount of eligibility they have remaining. Yeah, I think that's the big thing is, yes, they have a, a great future this season looking ahead, but imagine these young women as juniors and seniors. It's definitely and it's going to be an advantage. Just one year, you know, think about your worldly experience you gain. On the ground. Nice play by the second baseman, Andal, on to first, not in time. There are now two outs. The backhanded play by Andal to get the lead runner. Yeah, and that's the difference here in the fifth inning. Making these plays on the defensive side for Boston Co College. Andal with a nice little backhand on a ball that was hit well. Here's Gilstrap. She had the defensive play of the game back in that fourth inning. Shortstop backhanded the ball deep in the hole in the outfield grass and still had enough arm to get the out at first. One for three. Gilstrap has scored twice. There goes Clark down to second, and she'll make it without a throw. Hmm, that's aggressive, leading by six. Clark with a good jump. I just don't know why Bacano didn't throw that, but I think she thought Clark possibly had such a good jump, she wasn't going to make the throw. Snap throw down a second again. That's the third time we've seen Bacano do that. So is that communicated beforehand by the coaching staff? Not to throw it on the steal? No, the throw down there to try and pick off Clark. No, second. I think that's all an eight. I think anytime it's just her way of keeping somebody with the speed of Clark close to second base. And the second baseman is just always going to cover? Always. Off speed pitch, a beauty. And again, <laughs> throw down a second. And when you have, you know, the arm of Bacano, it, it's not a bad play because it really keeps somebody like Clark honest with their jumps, honest with the way they lead off the second base. Back to the pitcher, Cook, unable to make a play. So the inning continues. Gilstrap hit it off the end of the bat, and Cook just couldn't spear it. So runners on at the corners with two outs, and Valerie Cagle will bat. By Fielder, number 72, Valerie Cagle. Runners on at the corners. Let's see if uh, Coach Rittman puts Gilstrap in motion. Remember, a two-spot here for Clemson, and this game's over. Yeah, and that's a debatable point because obviously we know that Clemson has the speed, but Bucano behind the plate has thrown out more runners than any other catcher in the ACC this year. So 
to be on, to play it safe, you want Cagle to swing the bat. You want her to swing the bat here, not take a chance of getting thrown out. But Coach Rittman knows his staff better than I do. All right, I think BC having a conversation just to make sure that everyone understands how important it is uh, to get back into that dugout. All right, Clark on at third. Gilstrap, the most important runner. She's on at first. Here's Valerie Cagle. Batting average of 384 beginning of the day. She's one for three. She's put the ball in play three times. Off the thumb, squibs it foul. Again, foul. A little housekeeping for those of you uh, keeping score at home or for those of you with a vested interest in what happened with Ansley Gilstrap. That last ball that she hit off the end of the bat that was picked up by Cook uh, was ruled a fielder's choice. It wasn't a base hit, nor was it an error. It was just the pitcher's decision to try and get the out at third, which never materialized, so it's a fielder's choice. Ball and two strikes. Valerie Cagle from Yorktown, Virginia. Historic Yorktown, Virginia. Chance to end the game right here. Nope, not going to happen. CC Cook strikes out Cagle, and the game continues. Clemson leaves two aboard. Top of the sixth inning, Clemson Tigers. A six-run lead on the BC Eagles. Really good job uh, by the freshman left-hander, Millie Thompson. She's done a good job in that circle. She's done a really nice job, and mixing in her change of speed has really given her a lot of success today, scattering six hits, giving up just one run. Leading off the top of the sixth inning for the Eagles. First baseman, number five, Kristen Kyrie. All right, BC running out of time. They've got six more outs to play with. They're down by six. Kristen Kyrie leads things off. Cleanup hitter from Vienna, Virginia. Got two Virginians squaring off. Kyrie from Vienna. Millie Thompson from Bedford, Virginia. Oh for two for Guy Ree. To left field. This ball's hit pretty well. It's going to be off the wall. Chance for extra bases. The throw. Safe at second. Lead off double for Guy Ree. Kyrie smacks this ball. I thought it had a chance to go out. I love the defensive play by Logaleo, how she squares herself up to the wall, which gives her a chance to try to get the out at second base. Kiana Rondaza is the batter. BC as a team has actually matched Clemson's output in terms of hits. Both sides with seven. Game's only home run was hit by Boston College. So some positives for BC who came into this game. Hitting just 212 as a team compared to Clemson hitting 308. That actually hit the bat of Randazza, two and one. That's a tough break. Count should be three and oh. Boston College has had at least one base hit in every inning, with the exception of the first. Well, they've been working a lot on their offense. Put together some key wins last week against Syracuse. On the ground, second baseman Pereira. There's the first out.
Here comes the other guy Ree. This is Nicole. Hit hard left center field. It's going to stay in the ballpark. Catch made by Logaleo. And one guy re scores while the other one makes it out. Kristen Guy re scores on a sacrifice fly off the bat of Nicole Guy re. And it's now 7 to 2. Here comes BC. Now within 5. That's a good job manufacturing runs. Hit behind a runner to get that runner to third. And now the sack fly to score the run. Here comes Picano. Homer to last time up. We talked about it in the second inning when Bacano was first at the plate. There was one out and runners on at second and third. We speculated, you know, this is going to be a big at bat. She's the one player in that BC lineup that can run into one and get yourself a big fly. She didn't get one that time, but she did her last time up. This game would have been radically different if that home run had come in the second as opposed to the fourth. Let's take a look at her power back in the fourth inning. One of the only miscues for Thompson. Tell you having hitters that can hit a home run it makes such a difference in a, in a lineup because if you don't and we see that with boston college they don't have a lot of home runs on the year so many things have to go right to push a run across where when you have power throughout your lineup like we saw last week with nc state you know with something really special at any given time they can produce a bunch of runs And another hit batter. Bacano is hit. That is the second batter hit by Millie Thompson. So the inning continues for the Eagles. And the scheduled batter is the shortstop Valido, but she's going to be pulled back to the dugout. Kennedy Lapshear is going to be the batter. All right, so BC looking for lightning in a bottle. They've already scored one run here in the sixth. Called strike one. Lapshear, a junior from Southern California. She's from El Cajon, California, outside of San Diego. Pitch gets away from the catcher, and that will allow Bacano to pick up an extra bag. Scored a wild pitch thrown by Thompson. And another move, and now with Bacano in scoring position and chance to score on a single, now's the time when Cavill Hogg goes to the bench to bring in a pinch runner. Maddie Carp. Maddie Carpy. This is a good opportunity for Lapshire. It's only her 12th at bat this season. Be a good confidence booster if she can get herself a base hit and an RBI right here. Was it a tactical move by Cavill Hunt to bring in the pinch runner when Bacanio got to second as opposed to when she was just at first? Yeah, absolutely. You know, you do that with two outs. You don't necessarily want to use the pinch runner when they're at first base, but when they get into scoring position, a lot of coaches will make that move. On the ground, Pereira throws out Lapshur, and the inning is over for BC. They do push across another. It is now 7-2, to Clemson on top. Welcome back, everyone. Bottom of the sixth inning, Boston College. They have matched Clemson with seven hits. But Clemson has been more productive with their seven hits. They lead by five. Seven and two is our score. First game of a doubleheader, both games you can find right here with my partner, Barb Jordan. I'm Eric Collins. We talked to Amy Cavillhug uh, at Boston College earlier this week, and she said, you know what? We compete. 
You know, our record is not indicative of who we are as a club. Uh, and yet, they're four and fourteen in the ACC. They're eight and twenty-two on the year. But she's right. Her team has done just enough to compete and not go away. They've been enough of a pest here against a Clemson team that's nationally ranked. Uh, it's a good characteristic for a team not to give up, not to give in, to find a way to stay in ball games, and that's what we're seeing here today. Unfortunately for BC, they gave up four runs in the first inning, but you take away that first inning, it's a different ball game. It'd be three to two. Remember that inning unraveled with the key error on the second batter of the game. Marissa Gambarda bats. Gambarda's first look at CeCe Cook, who came in back in the fourth inning. Biggest blow of the game provided by Gambarda in the fourth inning. That ended the day of Susanna Anderson. A bases loaded double. 2 0. Oh. Beautiful pitch, two and one. Well, even though last year's season was shortened, combine that with this year in Clemson, they are 37 and 0 when they score five or more runs, dating back to last season. Wow. Hit hard, right on the screws. Second base hit of the ball game for Gumbarda. That's an impressive looking hitter. Gumbarda, that ball left mm. up in the zone, and she doesn't waste it. All right, here's Casey Bigham. Bigham came on defensively a couple innings ago, has one plate appearance. She walked and stole the base in the fourth inning. Bigham, the first Clemson Tiger batter to face Cook for a second time. All right, uh, if you're Bigham right now, what have you learned about CeCe Cook, and what's your thought process? Well, I'd swing early. I think Cook has settled in. We saw her a little erratic the first inning. She came in in relief, but now she's settled in, and she's really coming after the zone. Second consecutive batter to begin this sixth inning that Cook has started with two balls. Five run game. If it ever gets to eight, this one is over immediately. Three and oh. That last thing you want to do if you're Cook is give up base runners. Nothing's supposed to be free. Three and one. Clemson won the season series opener yesterday, six nothing. Limiting BC to just three singles. All the way to the backstop. Five pitch walk to Bigham, and now Cook's in trouble. Cook's in hot water. Runners at first and at second, nobody out. Another wild pitch. This is the third wild pitch by Cook. And here comes trouble. Clemson is going to bring in one of their secret weapons. Morgan Johnson, who has got power for days. She'll come to the plate. She swatted a homer in last night's ball game. Look at those numbers. This is coming off your bench. 360 with four homers. Good golly. <laughs> 18 games played, just six starts for the freshman. And head coach Cavill Hogg wants a conversation to go over the scouting report. Barb, you like uh, walk-off homers? I do. Everybody does. How about this? Earlier this week, 
Johnson had herself one. Enormous power. <laughs> Leads the team in slugging percentage by a wide margin. Look at the size of her standing next to Coach Rittman, who's a pretty good sized man. <laughs> yep. Talented youngster. Listed at six feet one. She's from Evans, Georgia. She could end it with a big fly right here. Pitch misses down low. I can't think of too many 6-1 softball players. And I've been around the block a time or two. Pitchers, yes. <laughs> a lot of great pitchers of that size. But it's hard to be a great hitter at 6-1. Or at least it's rare. And 60 more feet taken by both base runners. Gumbarda and Bigham. I don't know if that's going to be a wild pitcher or a pass ball. That's yeah, going to be a pass ball. Johnson in a position to get her second walk-off of the week, whether it be a base hit or a home run. 2-0. Oh. On the ground hard. Wow. Like it shot out of a cannon. Oh, they're going to send the runner home, and she scores. The throw is cut off. And I thought that Bigham was going to be dead to rights. A two RBI single for Morgan Johnson. What a fun player to watch. Johnson drills this ball through. Coach Rittman is sending the runner. And I agree, she's going to be out at the plate. Alator cuts it off. Miscommunication. They have a long discussion afterwards. But I think they had a chance to get the runner. Still nobody out. Johnson on it first. It's going to run for herself. Logaleo, the batter. If Johnson scores, this one's over. Now it becomes super important for CeCe Cook to avoid the wild pitch. To avoid the pass ball. You can't give up an extra 60 feet here. Mm. Bacano. It's going to be one big bruise after this game. I'll tell you, she does a terrific job behind the plate. Bunted foul. Barbara, selfishly, I'm hoping for a ball to the gap just to see Morgan Johnson run <laughs> with those long strides of hers at first base. Fun athlete to watch. We know she has power. Let's take a look at her speed. One ball and two strikes. Bottom of the sixth inning. Time running out for BC. Popped up. It's going to stay in the infield. One down. JoJo Hyatt. Fourth plate appearance, 0 for 2 with a walk. Barb, I know it's the way the game is played, but I just still can't get over every single player almost in the infield and in the outfield is looking at their wrist before every pitch is being thrown. Everyone's looking at scouting reports where that pitch is going to be thrown. There's a lot to think about. Even though you're looking at a cheat sheet, that's still a lot of information before every single pitch. And that will allow Johnson to move into scoring position. Another wild pitch for Cook. 
And going back to the defense, looking at their wristbands, I think any time you can anticipate where a pitch is going to be, you measure it up with the way the batter's taken their dry swings, gives you an edge on the defensive side of the field. But if you're looking down at a Chi-Chi as opposed to looking at the batter's body English and paying attention to what's happening in the game and the, the wind and all that other stuff... Yeah, I think you're doing all of that. I think I'm looking at the way that the batter's swinging the bat, and I'm looking at what the sign's going to be and where the pitch is going to be, and then I'm doing the math in my head of what their swing is, and then I have a little bit of anticipation. If the pitch is thrown to that spot, she should be hitting it Yep. right here. Four-pitch walk to JoJo Hyatt. Second time today that Hyatt has walked. Next in line, the second baseman, Cami Pereira. And Pereira's had a nice afternoon. Pereira has not been stopped today. She's reached base three times, a walk, a single, and hit with a pitch. That's now five consecutive pitches that have missed for Cook. Senior from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Mm. Tell you, we see the difference in Cook of when she gets ahead of a hitter and when she gets behind. There is definitely blood in the water. One of the positives for Clemson's offense today, seven of the nine starters have base hit. So it's not just one section of the lineup. They've pretty much hit throughout. Everybody finding their way on base. If Johnson scores from second base, this game's over. 2-0. and 3-0. What's your philosophy if you're Pereira? It's 3-0. Do you swing and try and end it, or do you just try and work yourself on for a walk? I think you got to go with the coach's philosophy on this. Well, no decision needs to be made. Four-pitch walk. And perfection continues for Pereira. She's been aboard four times in this ball game. And now the game ending runner is at third for John Rittman's Clemson Tigers. And Amy Cavillhog has decided she's gonna have to make a change. CeCe Cook has home plate moving around on her right now. And so Cook is going to be lifted. We'll have a new pitcher. We'll tell you more when we return. Entire situation for BC. They're down seven. Bottom of the sixth inning. Clemson has the bases loaded. And Barb, they're bringing a new pitcher. Well, they're bringing in Gianna Randazza from right field. She's pitched one inning this year. That was back on April 1st against Virginia. And that inning was perfect. You know, we all go back to our younger days. All these athletes probably pitched at one point or another. Randazza did. And she was perfect in the one <laughs> inning she had playing in a college game. All right, well, this is a tall task. Base is loaded for Clemson. Mackenzie Clark is the batter, and it's ball one to Clark. Oh, Bacano. Talk about earning your scholarship. Absolutely. Set up outside, gets to that pitch that tailed off inside. 2-0. Oh. We are now 2 Wild ones away from having a walk-off win for Clemson. Two balls, no strikes. The run-ahead rule kicks in when one team is ahead by eight. A potential eighth run is at third base in the form of Morgan Johnson. High drive. This could be deep enough. Johnson tags from third. Here she comes. Morgan Johnson to evade the tag and Clemson wins it by a score of 10 to 2. A nice offensive production from the Clemson Tigers today. They started off early scoring four in the first.
Sprayed off three more in the fourth and three here in the bottom of the sixth inning. A nice job offensively. All right. So the Clemson Tigers have won the first two games of this four-game weekend series. And folks, I got great news for you. If you enjoyed what you just saw, we've got more coming your way. Game two coming up in approximately 30 minutes time. We'll have game two of this doubleheader, Clemson and BC. But for now, for my partner, Barb Jordan, I'm Eric Collins stepping aside. We will see you back in a half.